and gentlemen, and honored guests, I am Scott Davis, your narrator for today's retirement ceremony. Due to COVID restrictions, we have had to modify some of our formal procedures to abide by current guidelines. Today, I have the distinct honor and privilege to welcome you as we honor the distinguished career of Mr. Larry Holmes, followed by 35 years of honorable service to We have over 60 friends and family joining us virtually from all over the world. We thank you for taking time today, whether you're in the room or online, to celebrate the retirement for Mr. Larry Holmes. Officiating today's ceremony is Lieutenant Colonel Scott Weed, Commander, 96th Communications Squadron. As a reminder, on the first note of the national anthem, protocol for military members is to stand at attention. For civilians, please place your right hand over your heart. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the arrival of the official party, the presentation of the colors by the honor guard, and the singing of the national anthem by Miss Helen McCurdy, followed by the invocation by Pastor Sean Ellis.
Well, thank you all for being here to be a part as we celebrate Larry and all of his accomplishments over the years. I would like to begin with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, it is uh, just so great that we get to uh, celebrate um, what you have done and uh, the way that you have used Larry over all of these years. Father, we thank you for um, just this great country we live in. Um, Father, for the men and the women who wear this uniform, who sacrifice so much in their families, put so much uh, on the line, Father, to be able to provide the freedoms that we have and that we get to um, experience together. And Father, thank you for Larry and for everyone who um, serves in these civilian roles, Father, to support those in uniform, to work alongside them and provide the opportunities that we have as well. And so we just thank you for his years of service, um, for his family and for their sacrifice and commitment and dedication as well. And Father, we pray that you would just do incredible things um, in and through him as he gets to enjoy um, these next few years of retirement and uh, all that comes with that. And so, uh, Father, thank you for letting us be able to celebrate him today. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, you may be seated. We would like to take a moment to recognize Mr. Holmes's family and friends attending today's ceremony. Mrs. Holmes, his wife, Renee, is with us this morning. And his son, Justin, is watching from Berlin. His mother-in-law, Kathy Jones, and his brother-in-law, Sturgill Jones, and his, and his family is watching from West Virginia. Also attending are close friends, Tina, Allen, and Haley Cummings. His goddaughter, Caitlin, is watching from Ocala. And Dixon is watching from Kenya. Also welcome to the other online guests, too numerous to mention. Finally, we want to extend a warm welcome to all other special guests, friends, and the men and women of Team Eggman. Thank you all for being here today. At this time, it is an honor to introduce today's presiding officer, Lieutenant Colonel Scott Weed. All right, so happy Monday, everyone. Uh, definitely a, a banner Monday for Larry here. Uh, so uh, again, Lieutenant Colonel Scott Weed, Commander of 96 Comp Squadron. Uh, had the honor of working with Larry for about a year and a half now, and uh, really want to thank you for joining us for this monumental uh, milestone in, in Larry's service. Uh, you know, very glad that we can still hold the ceremony. Uh, a lot of the guidance and the conditions have obviously changed over time, but uh, big, big thanks to the Beachside community crew. Uh, between the, uh, the venue, the connectivity, which is most important probably, especially this crowd, uh, the fellowship, uh, Scott, Scott Davis, uh, Lieutenant Hahn, Sergeant Bro, SEO team, Honor Guard. You guys helped make this a reality, which is, uh, is no small feat right now. You know, over the past uh, year, it's been hard to celebrate uh, and fully honor a lot of our folks the way we, uh, we really should. So, uh, you know, as we put safety over celebration. Uh, but, you know, this kind of event really shows you what happens when people come together and work for something greater than themselves. Uh, special thanks to Renee and, and Justin, who's online, the uh, family of friends from literally the four corners of the world, uh, ironically brought together by the same technology that Larry has spent a career uh, fielding and improving. Uh, so that's, uh, that's pretty awesome. Uh, you know, overall ceremonies like these are uh, far too short uh, to be commensurate with what they truly represent. You know, we have roughly an hour. We have, uh, uh, you know, maybe 10 or 15 minutes of comments to try to wrap up three and a half decades of service uh, with 15 lines of an award citation, which will try to encapsulate that same thing. So, you know, really in between those lines and in between my words, there are countless unspoken memories of friendships made, hard won accomplishments, uh, and effectively a life dedicated to service, right? So uh, this event is but a flash in the pan, uh, but it's our attempt to try to thank a man for, for a life dedicated to professionalism and service. You know, it would be fun in a traditional active duty retirement to talk about, you know, hey, when when Larry came in and, uh, 20 years ago, th these are the popular highlights from that year. Uh, with Larry, though, I get to go back a little further than the standard 20 years, uh, and I get to go back to 1985 and the Wayback Machine. And typically, you know, we'd say stuff about uh, 1985 was the year that Gorbachev and Reagan met for the first time. It's when Coca-Cola came out with New Coke, which lasted all of six months. Uh, or it's when Michael Jordan was named Rookie of the Year for his first season with the Chicago Bulls. 
But given the crowd and the work that Larry's obviously dedicated himself to doing, a little bit more of a tech focus is probably apropos. So 1985 is when the compact disc was released to American markets. It's when the original Nintendo Entertainment System with Super Mario Brothers, Duck Hunt, Ice Climbers, all the good stuff uh, first, first hit the shores. Uh, it's also when the first dot-com website was registered through DNS uh, to Symbolics.com, which manufactured machines that ran Lisp. Uh, but it's also when the original Macintosh, the Amiga 1000, the Commodore 128, and effectively the first Dell PC, known as the Turbo PC, all hit the, hit the stores. Um, you know, th at the time, the Commodore 128, obviously successor to the uh, 64, which I grew up with, had a whopping 128 kilobytes of RAM to work with. But, uh, you know, for the networking geeks out there, FTP was de defined in RFC 959. Uh, Ethernet was born out of IEEE 802.3 Alpha, even though it wasn't named Ethernet at the time. Um, and C++ as a programming language was first published. Uh, but maybe a little more relevant to most of us, Microsoft actually released its first version of Windows 1.0 in 1985, which had oddly enough carried tech support for uh, up until 2001 for some reason. But, uh, you know, Larry's career uh, has been relatively static, geographically speaking, uh, largely, uh, you know, beginning and ending in, in Eglin Air Force Base. But he's seen a massive amount of change, organizationally um, and mission change, if you will. So Larry's tenure um, obviously predates the current instantiation of the 96 test wing that we uh, both work at, uh, but it also predates its predecessor, the 96 Air Base Wing, and its predecessor, the 96 Wing. Uh, Larry was here before and after the Air Armament Center existed. So entire units have come and gone under, under Larry's tenure. Uh, but, you know, as the Greeks once said, the only thing constant in life is change. But, uh, you know, Larry began here at Eglin as a GS7 operations research analyst, uh, doing a lot of the, modelation, the modeling and simulation. That it informed how Eglin was going to pursue long-range weapons uh, over five- and ten-year plans. So just early on, obviously getting in at the core of what Eglin exists to do, which is to test and field weapons and other technology. But eventually he, uh, you know, moved into a lead role, um, over the uh, base and, and network computer support uh, here at Eglin. And he was really, uh, at the time, working on the mainframes that sustained um, and allowed the scientists, the engineers, and the data scientists to do their job. And anybody that can, has ever worked in test knows that this is computationally intensive work. It absolutely relies on resources and algorithms and methods that Larry cut his teeth on early on. So he continued to try to bring standardization and efficiency to an otherwise chaotic landscape of firewall rules, logins, address management, and business continuity. Uh, and many of the tools that Larry and the team, some of which are still, still uh, here with us, uh, developed early on, were actually scaled out uh, to broader Air Force-wide use and what we lovingly call the AFNET. <laughs> Um, one, of those, one of those contributions known as Ender is still, to this day, a very vital piece of what keeps Team Eglin operational. Uh, Larry was also instrumental in bringing a Cray supercomputer to Eglin Air Force Base to help stand up a high-performance modernization center, which, again, uh, helped set the conditions uh, so that the testers and the engineers could do the work that they so vitally need to do, uh, all of which directly supports national security. Uh, he was also key in shifting the base away from a legacy telephone construct towards uh, more of a converged voice solution, which we all know is VoIP, uh, relatively industry standard now. Uh, also championed Sonnet Fiber Backbone uh, that you know, provides well over 99% av availability of uh, critical circuits. And over time, Larry continued to advance into greater roles and responsibilities, culminating in his current position as chief of the operations flight for the 96 Comp Squadron. So in that capacity, Larry has led over 240 military and civilian to deliver the communications and cyber capabilities that Eglin needs day in and day out. From there, he's been at the helm of almost every major significant IT improvement supporting the largest Air Force installation. Uh, from, as you've heard a little bit in uh, Scott's opening comments, uh, land mobile radio and giant voice improvements, uh, to SIP report security, to uh, the, the famed DOD Windows 10 migration, which I think we all know where we were whenever we had to do that, uh, the creation of an IT equipment depot, and a myriad of other projects that really are oftentimes transparent to users, but absolutely existential to what they do. 
Um, he was also key in helping ensure that the squadron and the base passed the 2019 DOD level command cyber readiness inspection, which is uh, no small feat in and of itself. Um, and finally, he's, he's been a key player in a lot of the innovation efforts uh, that we've taken on at a squadron group and a wing level, including the novel use of augmented reality to try to simplify uh, buried cabling and infrastructure and siting, uh, to the squadron's first idea for a centralized uh, cross-functional training center. Bottom line, running the operations flight uh, is no small feat, right? So the size, uh, the size compares to that of any unit, the diversity of demands is oftentimes unchecked, um, and, it, and it's no small feat for any leader, and it keeps them on their toes, because there are never enough people or resources to do what the men and women of the operations flight are asked to do. But they do it with pride, professionalism, and a customer focus that's truly the testament to Larry's time here. So at the outset, I ask, you know, how could we characterize three and a half decades of service in a few paragraphs? Um, I ask you to think of this less as any kind of a summary of, of, of his career in this, in this ceremony, and, and really more of the turning of a page for Larry, uh, as Larry, Renee, and Justin kind of move on to that next chapter. You know, the, the nice thing is Larry will no longer have to worry about Air Force instructions, or DOD policies, or time cards, or appraisals, or outages, or motivational speeches by the chief. But Larry has earned that rarest of modern abilities, which is to become his own boss. He can now set his own priorities and most importantly, set his own hours. And of that, I think we're all jealous. Um, but Larry has been a member of our squadron long before it was the 96th Comp Squadron we all know today. And although it'll be different and new to not have his name on the organizational chart and the recall rosters, uh, we know that he leaves a strong legacy of leaders from the branch chiefs on down of folks that he has developed and, and put into positions to continue the mission going forward. So in closing, 35 years may sound like a lifetime, especially to our younger members in the audience, um, but it, if you ask some of the folks in the crowd, it really goes by in the blink of an eye. Renee and Justin, thank you for sharing your husband and father with the nation for the last 35 years. It's a debt that cannot be repaid, but is deeply appreciated. And Larry, thank you for your service. It's been an honor to serve with you, and I wish you the best of luck in the next chapter. Cool. Thank you. Thank you, Lieutenant Colonel Weed. Mr. Holmes, please join Lieutenant Colonel Weed at center stage. Ladies and gentlemen, Lieutenant Colonel Weed will now present Mr. Holmes the Outstanding Civilian Career Service Award. The Air Force Outstanding Civilian, C Civilian Career Service Award Medal is granted to employees of the Air Force that exhibit significant achievements, leadership, unconventional competence, and notable impact upon the Air Force mission throughout the employee's career. Please stand for the citation. In recognition of his distinguished performance in support of the United States Air Force from 15 December 1985 to 31 December 2020, most notably as Director, Operations Flight, 96 Communications Squadron, 96 Mission Support Group, 96 Test Wing, Air Force Test Center, Air Force Material Command, Eglin Air Force Base, Florida. During this period, Mr. Holmes managed operational support requirements for 21,500 Eglin Air Force Base users and guided a multitude of major base level programs to include Enterprise Land Mobile Radio, Giant Voice, Information Technology Depot, Tech Control, the Base Network, and Mission Essential Planning Process. Finally, he earned the Armed Forces Civilian Service Medal for his outstanding contributions and direct support of military forces during real world operations. The distinctive accomplishments of Mr. Holmes culminate a long, and distinguished career with the United States government and reflect great credit upon himself and the United States Air Force. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated.
Every rem member retiring from civil service is presented with a special certificate of service to commemorate their career. It reads as follows. From the United States Air Force, this is to recognize Larry A. Holmes for 35 years of faithful and devoted federal civilian service. On the occasion of retirement from employment with the United States Air Force given this 31st day of December 2020, signed Brigadier General Scott A. Kane, 96 Test Wing. Mr. Holmes has also received a Certificate of Appreciation from the President of the United States for C Civilian Air Force Service. It reads, Dear Mr. Holmes, I send my personal congratulations and offer the, the country's sincere gratitude as you retire from the Department of the Air Force with 35 years of civilian service. Thank you for your contributions to the safety of the American people and the security of America. As you open this next chapter in your life, I hope that you feel tremendous pride in your service to our nation and that you continue to find ways to invest in your community and our country. Milani and I send our best wishes for success in all of your future endeavors. May God bless you and may God bless our great nation. Signed, Donald J. Trump, Commander-in-Chief. In addition to the letter from President Trump, Mr. Holmes has also received an appreciation letter from George, President George W. Bush. At this time, we invite Mrs. Holmes to join her husband on stage. Behind every successful career is a spouse who has supported and sacrificed many things to help their partner. At this time, we will present Mrs. Renee Holmes with a Certificate of Appreciation from the United States Air Force. It reads, Appreciation. The United States Air Force presents this Certificate of Appreciation to Donna Renee Holmes for the commitment and numerous contributions that made positive impacts to the nation's defense. Thank you for the support which gave strength and purpose to your spouse's service. Signed, Brigadier General, Commander, Scott A. Kane, 96 Test Wing. Thank you, Renee. We will now have a special flag folding ceremony for Mr. Holmes. Mr. Holmes, please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, please remain seated for the flag folding presentation. A thoughtful mind, when it sees a nation's flag, sees not the flag, but the nation itself. Whatever may be its symbols or insignia, one reads chiefly in the flag. The government, principles, truths, and history that belong to the nation are what set it forth. The American flag has been a symbol of liberty which men and women rejoice in. It is the majesty and the history of our United States, and we have simply crowned it Old Glory.
For more than 200 years, the American flag has been the symbol of our nation's unity, as well as a source of pride and inspiration for millions of citizens. Born on June 14, 1777, the Second Continental Congress determined that the flag of the United States be 13 stripes, alternating between seven red and six white, and that the Union be 13 stars, white in a blue field, representing a new constellation. Between 1777 and 1960, the shape and design of the flag evolved into the flag presented before you today. The 13 horizontal stripes represent the original 13 colonies, while the stars represent the 50 states of the Union. The colors of the flag are symbolic as well. Red symbolizes hardiness and valor, white signifies purity and innocence, and blue represents vigilance, perseverance, and justice. Traditionally, a symbol of liberty, the American flag has carried the message of freedom and inspired Americans both home and abroad. In 1814, Francis Scott Key was so moved at seeing the stars and stripes waving after the British shelling of Baltimore's Fort McHenry that he wrote the words to the Star Spangled Banner. In 1892, the flag inspired Francis Bellamy to write the Pledge of Allegiance, our most famous flag salute and patriotic oath. In July 1969, the American flag was flown in space when Neil Armstrong planted it on the surface of the moon. Today, our flag flies on constellations of Air Force satellites that circle our globe and on the fin flash of our aircraft in harm's way in every corner of the world. Indeed, it flies in the heart of every airman who serves our great nation. The sun never sets on our United States Air Force nor on the flag we so proudly cherish. Since 1777, no generation of Americans have been sparred the responsibility of defending freedom. Today's airmen remain committed to preserving the freedom that others have won for us for generations to come. By displaying the flag and giving it a distinctive fold, we show respect to the flag, express our gratitude to those individuals who fought and continue to fight for freedom at home and abroad. Since the dawn of the 20th century, airmen have proudly flown the flag in every major conflict on land and skies around the world. It is their responsibility, our responsibility, to continue to protect and preserve the rights, privileges, and freedoms that we as Americans enjoy today. The United States flag represents who we are. It stands for the freedom we all share and the pride and patriotism we feel for our country. We cherish its legacy as as a beacon of hope to one and all. Long may it wave. At this time, we have a few special presentations for Mr. Holmes. Lieutenant Colonel Wheat. All right, so this will be a little faster. I uh, just had to uh, take this opportunity to, to provide uh, Larry with a, a uh, squadron commander coin from the 96 uh, Comp Squadron. So uh, Larry is one of the hum most humble guys. You, you, you know Larry, that's why you're here. But he's one of the most humble guys that you'll ever meet. Um, and the level of knowledge, uh, expertise, decorum, patience, 
uh, that he brings uh, to the office day in and day out, not just for 35 years, but specifically as long as I've been here, uh, the squadron commander cannot do the job that it, they're asked to do without senior civilians like Larry, like Rich, like the vast majority of the chiefs that are in this room. Uh, so just smallest token to say that you absolutely make this job uh, achievable and uh, enjoyable. So thank you, Larry. All right, Larry, I get to go off script a little bit here. You're in trouble. So from the flight, we have a few retirement gifts that we'd like to present to you. We don't necessarily see Larry laying around the couch watching Netflix through his retirement. We know better than that. So we did get you a few items that we think will help you in your next endeavor. But before I give you those, I'd like to say a few things. I've worked for Larry for over 20 years. And I have to say that it has been an extremely enjoyable and educational experience. I've learned a lot from you, all the way from software development to programming in my earlier years to supervising, managing, on into leadership. And I thank you for that. Your influence to the 96 CS and Eglin as a whole has been considerable. I know once you retire and move on that your absence will be felt by all. I am very fortunate to have worked under your leadership for such a long period of time. Most people don't have that opportunity. You have not only been an amazing boss, but a very caring person and a friend. So from all of SEO, we want to thank you. We want to wish you and your family the best. Happy retirement, and you will be missed. Senior Master Sergeant Bro. Mr. Holmes, I just want to personally thank you uh, for, for all the time that you've spent over the last two and a half years. Uh, let me bug you for, for all the questions when it comes to civilian uh, appraisals and all the, all the other stuff that, that goes along with a civilian job as well as everything you've taught me. Uh, it's, it's been a great ride for me over the last two and a half years just, just uh, working, w working for you. So thank you very much. And uh, as a flight, we were kind of pondering, what do we do for you? I, I know. You know, most military folks, they get, they get a big shadow box and it's got the flag and it has all the, all the awards and stuff that they've, uh, they've earned throughout the years as far as decorations and everything. Um, and, and, and I know you've been here on Eglin for quite a while, uh, but still wanted to get you something special that uh, encapsulates at least the flag and, and, and all of your accomplishments. Uh, so the best we could do, if I can, um, is we got you a uh, flag case. And it's got, uh, it has the shortened version of the retirement certificate in it. And then also the 10, 20, 30 year pins that you've received over your time. And then a squadron coin. So we just want to say thank you so much uh, from, from the flight for, for all you've done. And uh, hopefully this, this uh, signifies enough for it. Yes, sir. Thank you. Mr. Preble? Larry, I'd just like to personally reiterate what Scott said about you. Uh, your guidance, your leadership means a lot to the entire flight and squadron. Uh, we're definitely going to miss you. Um, I don't know what else to say except I appreciate all the coaching, everything you've taught me through the years, and hopefully we'll get to continue to do that. I know where you live. So Renee's going to open the door, hopefully, and we're still good to go. Uh, with that, ACOW got together. We got to a couple of little parting gifts. One of them I know will keep you close by for coaching, and that's a couple bags of M&Ms that you got to have. Okay, yeah. To go with that is a wide variety of dry erase markers because Larry's real good at handing out multiple choice colors to see what personality you are by pulling what pen color you get. There you go. So, so we got a big pack of those. 
And I couldn't remember seeing a whiteboard in your office at home. So with that. Oh, OK. There's something to write on. Something to write on. And to make sure we don't mess up the pen except the glass. All right. So with that, you're afraid you're on your board? What you allow you teach. There it is. So thank you very much. Mr. Levine, would you like to come up? Good morning, Larry. <clears throat> Unfortunately, I don't have a gift. This was 2020. You know, the gift that was supposed to be here last week didn't make it. But I at least want to take a minute to, uh, to thank you for, the, for what you've done, to us, or done with us over the years. Land Mobile Radio started working for Larry about nine years ago, ten years ago, when the comm group and the comm squadron reorganized. And in that time, we tried to be as self-sufficient as we could be and be able to stand on our own two feet and try to work our own problems when they arose. But everybody knows that there are times where you need senior leadership, and we had to call on Larry. And it was very reassuring to know that when we had things that we needed top cover on or needed help with, that you were always there, and you're always, you always had the, the words of wisdom to get us through these issues. Uh, there were times where I'd go into Larry's office with a, what I thought was a, a mountain I needed to move, and then after discussing it with Larry, I found I just had little pebbles I needed to, to shoe off. So Larry, uh, Thank you for your, for your top cover. Thank you for your, your leadership. And personally, I would like to say thank you for the mentorship and leadership uh, that, that you've taught me over the years. So thank you, Larry. Uh, when the gift gets here, I'll be sure to get it to you. <laughs> Thanks. Ladies and gentlemen, the moment has finally come I present to you Mr. Larry Holmes, United States Civilian DOD, retired. Well, I'm certainly glad to be here, and I'm glad for everybody that could be here. Carl Weed, thank you so much for doing this. It uh, means a lot. Uh, as you may have seen on the plaque, 17 commanders is a lot. Uh, you score right up there at the top of the list, and I appreciate everything you've done uh, and, and helped us with. Uh, he was there when we needed him, was out of the way when we needed him, and just let us do our thing, and, and we really appreciate that. That was, it's been great to go out that way. Uh, of course, the, my SCO team, uh, branch chiefs, a lot of them are here. Uh, I appreciate you being here, especially uh, Tenet and Bro for pulling all this together, uh, just going the extra mile, and Scott, for participating and, and being in here. It's all great, and, you know, this, this is uh, good stuff. So uh, I just wanted to thank uh, everyone in the room and everyone online. Uh, thank you for being here. Uh, hopefully this has been, uh, we haven't done a lot of this uh, high-tech uh, thing, so hopefully this will be a first. You can put that on the list. We did the first high-tech uh, retirement uh, so uh, hopefully you've been able to see and feel like you've been here, and I do feel I do feel you. I appreciate you signing up. Uh, that let me know that you're watching, and it's been great. So uh, I just wanted to say that our life is like a series of daily decisions. Uh, some of them are big, some are small, uh, but they're all important, and you never know what hangs in the balance. So your decision to attend or take a few minutes means a lot to me, and I do appreciate that. Uh, if you got a handout when you come in, I printed something in there uh, in the back. Uh, feeling gratitude and not expressing it is like wrapping a present and not giving it. So you can feel gratitude, but if you don't express it at some point, then, uh, you know, what's the point? So I just want to take a second. I'm going to step through a couple of things, thank, you know, do the obligatory thing, but I do appreciate everybody being here, and uh, I just want to take a minute to actually express something. So uh, what led me here? What decisions have I made that led me here? Like the colonel said, we... You know, this goes by pretty quickly. Uh, but I grew up near Charleston, West Virginia, and there are a lot of family and friends watching from there, and uh, I do appreciate you taking time to uh, participate. Um, we had um, mother-in-law, Kathy, and brother, and, and all the folks, just a lot of family watching. I do appreciate you, you being here. 
My next door neighbor growing up was Jimmy. Uh, we, uh, we ended up being my best friend. Uh, and he introduced me to my future wife, Renee, when we were in middle school at a roller rink, if you can imagine. And I have something for you. Appreciate everything. Loving my life. Um, so um, eventually, we all left home. My best friend's next door. We kind of did the high school thing. We all left, and a bunch of us ended up in Chattanooga, Tennessee, in college. Okay, so that was that was great. And Jimmy was roommate, and he met his uh, future wife at the time, Tina, who is here this morning. And I appreciate you being here uh, and uh, making the trip down here. It was. Um, Sadly, uh, he passed, Jimmy passed in 2005 suddenly, and, but I've enjoyed uh, keeping up with uh, all the kids and passing on stories and doing those kind of things. So, uh, Maria, uh, Jay, Nathaniel, I appreciate you taking your lunch. They couldn't be here, but they're taking their lunch right now to watch. I do appreciate that. His other son, Alan, is here with his family, Haley, the kids. appreciate you guys being here. So, uh, it's all good. So uh, after college, we did the college thing. It's funny how you wrap up your site. The four years of college, that, that college thing, it's really fast. Uh, we grew up, it was, you know, just really quick. So we, uh, Renee and I married right after college. We dated for a long time. We actually had to have our parents and stuff uh, take us on dates and things like that, so uh, early on. But we finally got married, and um, we followed some new friends from college to uh, Alaska for a job, a uh, road trip, and... Uh, I guess it's uh, two of those friends are actually followed us back down here. They're actually in the local area and they're watching right now. So I do appreciate them being here and all the adventures we've had. Um, they're watching right now with their families and we love you guys and thank you for, for, for uh, participating as well. So my parents uh, have passed away, but they did something for me very, very special early on. They, uh, my dad was a truck driver. He loved to go on road trips and camping. He'd take the camper, big rig, that was his thing, and he didn't know where to go. So he said, well, um, he just told me, figure out where you're going to go, uh, where we're going to go for three weeks, and I had to plan and implement the whole, the whole thing, okay? And so that was just like, wow. Uh, the big thing about that, this was before Google and Google Maps and GPSs and stuff, so you remember those paper map things you had to... So navigating a big rig in a big city and finding the locations and stuff gave me a skill set, which I think uh, we did that. We actually camped in all uh, 48 states uh, before it was all over. So the implementation of that, I think, gave me the skill set to coordinate, organize, and actually follow through with an implementation. Because you can come up with a plan all day long, but it's not going to help you if you can't actually get out there and do it. So uh, I, I do appreciate them for, for, for doing that. So the adventure of, hey, we're going to Alaska. We're going to road trip to Alaska. That was, that was fun. We, we, we took off for that. But when we got up there, it was cold. Okay, so, you know, you look at it, it's like long nights, it was cold weather and those sort of things. So I, I just, we just decided that we needed to move. So I got out a, a paper application with a pen and I filled out an application for civil service. Because you have to understand, you know, when you're in school, the map of the United States is there and you got Alaska and Hawaii and it's just right there, it looks real close. Well, Anchorage is a four hour flight to Seattle. So... And without internet and things, it hadn't and happened yet. So it was, it was kind of tricky to try to find a job and things, and it's expensive and those kind of things. So we felt out, the, oh, what could it hurt? I'll fill out the civil service application. I was doing IT up there. We set up the uh, daily news, and a, we helped a Christian school. I did all kinds of things up there. And I was like, it's time to go work somewhere warm. So that's how we ended up in Eglin. Uh, December 15th, 1985, which is almost 35 years to today. Uh, it, was, it was great. So... Um, you know, you heard a lot about my career, but but after we were here for about a year and a half, our son was born, Justin Allen. Um, he was he was born and proved our lives forever. Uh, Justin's influence not only touched us, but it touched a lot of friends. He was we were the place where all the families came over. You know, the the, the place. So he was uh, he was always uh, getting us involved, and so he he connected us with a lot of people. And I do appreciate the the interaction and the influence that he had, and it taught me a lot. So he had a large sphere of friends, and we actually, um, a lot of those are actually uh, watching right now. They've grown up and have families and stuff. 
we're still in touch and uh, really appreciate you guys taking time from all over the country. Uh, Adam and we've got um, Sonia and Tyler and you know Caleb and just all kinds of folks. John, just appreciate everybody that's uh, just participated. Uh, I know this isn't exciting like the, um, the survivor watch parties we had or the uh, Halo game nights and those kind of things, uh, but hey, we, uh, we keep up, we pray with you guys, and I do appreciate you, and I'm um, really proud of what you've done. So, uh, now, our son Justin is in Germany, Berlin right now. He's watching with friends, uh, I'm assuming, because he's always doing everything with friends. So I'm sure, Sylvia, uh, Justin, appreciate you, uh, you tuning in, and I may even be some other folks there. So, Navi Gates, okay? He left a creative job in... Uh, with Instagram to venture into another startup app. So he was, we were, I, I really enjoyed working with him on like, uh, you know the thing in, in, uh, called stories and in Instagram? Uh, we worked on a lot of the creative stuff with that. Really enjoyed when I could help the team uh, in New York and stuff, we could help them. But he left that to go to Berlin. He rallied a group of uh, folks together and they're doing another app startup. So. Uh, as a shameless plug here, if you have Instagram locations or maps or uh, look, pictures, basically, and you want to organize those really cool, it's called List. It's an app in the App Store, L-I-I-S-T. Okay, we'll hope that'll help you out. This is an international broadcast, so it's got to do something. I'm sure everybody will watch this. So, um, so uh, Justin, I know you wish you could be here. Uh, we appreciate you. Don't worry about it. Uh, honor God, your family and your life's work by loving others around you. Uh, doing a great job, keep up the great work. Love you very much, and uh, Mom and I are proud of you. So, in 2009, after Justin left, we needed to kind of keep things going a little bit. We decided we needed to help the community and jump in, so we jumped in with Beachside Church and helped get started. Uh, had, had dinner with Sean at Ruby Tuesdays, and he's like, hey, would you be willing to help? Like, sure, let's, let's do it. So, what you see here, when you, when you go down the hallway and stuff, we've opened everything up here so you can wander through and look at some of the decorations and stuff. So uh, you're more than welcome to do that. But it, it really has connected me. It's enriched my life to be able to still continue to connect with folks. And it's been, it's been great. So I'd like to thank Sean, the staff, and everybody, um, Bob and Logan and Adam running cameras. Everybody's went the extra mile. They're not only here, but they're doing stuff in the background. And I really do appreciate that. Uh, the opportunity to help others has been big, we, we went on trips, we've done all sorts of things, but one of the opportunities is uh, I got to um, sponsor the education of a young man named Dixon in Kenya, uh, and all the way through school. Here, we just take school for granted. There, you have to actually pay to go to uh, elementary school and things, so he's been working with his family. He is in Kenya watching right now, and uh, Dixon, stay strong, uh, finish the school. He's one year from his engineering degree now in college, and we've, uh, it's, been a, it's been a great, Great ride, and uh, you know, just keep up the hard work. You'll get there. Um, for my Spartan team, everybody here and online, a lot of folks the squadron. I don't know if they're having a watch party at the break room, or I don't know what's happening there. But a lot of people signed up, so it's good. Uh, I just wanted to say, uh, you've heard me mentor one on one, but I don't get to talk to everybody directly sometimes as much as I'd like. So keep it simple. Uh, you, we have tasks. If you think back over 35 years, there's been tasks, there's been projects, there's been all this stuff, and I don't remember the details of what I did. So as you're working on something, don't worry about the what. It's people don't remember what you did for them; they remember how you made them feel. So customers, coworkers, if you can think of anything, it's like, well, how can I do this so that this person will feel like I care, like they're really a customer, or my coworker really cares that I'm there? Got to do it. So just keep it simple. It doesn't matter what you're doing. There's a whole lot of what over 35 years. Just, just keep, keep pressing in there. So. so to wrap up, the decisions I've made in the past have caused all of us to cross paths somehow. And uh, that's, that's so important, and I do appreciate that. Uh, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention life lessons over lunch. Uh, a lot of you out there have, we've been doing that for 11 years, and COVID kind of stopped it. Um, that's where we got together and just got, tried to encourage each other for work and try to come up with some things to make a work environment better. And several folks have just enjoyed doing that. And it was my pleasure. But Andy Stanley uh, spoke most of the time in that through video, but he always said, try to do for one person what you could do for every person. So that's also good advice. 
because you can try to do, you know, when we would do things at work, I would say, well, I need to go to everything. It's like, well, you, you can't go to everything. It's just not possible. So you have to be intentional with what you're doing. So um, try to, um, you know, just pick out something and just work hard at that. And don't worry about the rest of it will take care of itself. Now, I get asked a lot of questions. So what's next? Okay, I can tell you one thing. You won't see me walking around base as a contractor trying to sell you stuff. I can't tell you how many commanders and people retired. Next thing I know, they're sitting at my desk going, hey, I got a really product, and you just need to buy this for the base because uh, since we're operations, they think somehow we can wave a magic wand and buy all kinds of stuff and just put it in for the whole base. So I was like, you were just here. You know I can't do that, but hey, it didn't stop them. So, but I won't be doing that. So my intention is to volunteer more. I'm going to be helping here to help the church more. Uh, we're going to be finding ways to do for two or three people what I wish I could do for everyone instead of just one. So you won't see me on base uh, running around doing that kind of stuff. So I will be on base. I'm, uh, I think Scott's asked me to come have lunch. Several people are taking over some of my responsibilities, want to meet up some, so I'll be glad to do that. But So my advice for everyone, uh, decisions large or small are important, and Every decision you're making will determine the quality and direction of your life. So just be intentional with those, and I think everything will work out for you, especially at work. It's a good, good thing to do. So. so my wrapped gift of gratitude is to encourage you to tell you to be a blessing to others, to try to do what you can uh, for as many people as you can. So that would be great. So thank you for being here from all over the world, and the folks in the room, I appreciate you being here. Small group. Uh, Folks are here and uh, from church, and I just appreciate that too. So, uh, I think uh, I think uh, Scott's going to step in here. You want to come back up? Appreciate everybody. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the departure of the official party. Mr. Holmes, the men and women of the United States Air Force and Team Eglin are proud to have served with you. We wish you and your family the best and most successful in the future endeavors. Thank you all for attending. If you are able, please join Mr. Holmes and his family to celebrate in the lobby down the long hall to the right. There will be a lunch and a gathering. This concludes our ceremony. <laughs>